This video will be about technical subjects, a lot of them. First, are you experiencing extreme slowdowns on Amazon.com? About colon config, and then say yes to the doohickey. And also, there's two versions of about config. Some are more equal than others is what they've implemented. Look for privacy.resist fingerprinting. <clears throat> and tell it, yes, I want you to resist fingerprinting, or turn it off. One way or another, this will speed up Amazon. I want to point out the good and the bad reason it's deliberately screwing with you. If your web browser is set up by default the normal way, Amazon has to figure out what web browser you're using to present the page correctly so you can see it. Because standards are great, everybody's got one of their own, Every Tom, Dick, and Larry that wrote a web browser over the last five years decided to make them have a preferred format for viewing things, which means web pages that were universal many years ago aren't anymore. The web browsers even seem to go out of their way not to render a page correctly. I mean, it's not just a step backward. It's, a, it's, a, it's stepping in a, a pile of horseshit. But anyway... The web browser is telling the website what browser it is, and the website's trying to compensate for it. But that also means you're fingerprinted. You're trackable. Now, on virtually every website, there is no excuse for tracking you. Even on Amazon, there isn't. But the reason that they do it is bots. To be blunt, and they blog posted about it at one time, but they don't really advertise it for this reason. Uh, malware bots and robot accounts that aren't run by a human that would use your uh, bank account have a specific set of patterns they do. They try to emulate humans. Anything that doesn't look completely human, the website goes out of its way to fuck with your browser. That's all there is to it. My web browser and my computer has been configured to make it to where it's really hard to break it, really hard to make it reset, crash, slow down, etc. So what does Amazon do? They think it must be a bot, so they do the exact opposite of what I want them to do. <clears throat> Unironically, if I completely disabled their ability to fuck with me, the website would still be usable, but only, but it'd be much more irritating, and actually it would work less often. If I tell it my browser to overtly block any fingerprinting functions only, but turn off all of the other things I do for security, loads just fine. Many copies of Firefox, by default, and many other browsers, do the same resisting of fingerprinting. This either works really good, or it really crashes it. <clears throat> I don't normally agree to a large corporation wanting to keep track of me when I'm telling it not to, but in this case, it has a basis. Originally, a lot of this fingerprinting or monitoring of users was done just for marketing purposes. You know, money. But the other reason is it was originally born for detecting botnets. So, since it's used for both, so why did I change the setting? It is actually set to resist fingerprinting because that works currently. Every other month it changes. I either have to turn it on or off. So basically what they do is they know that most botnets are long-term botnets that don't want to change configuration. People buy these as turnkey systems to hack your accounts. So they just keep changing what it's going to do. <clears throat> so yeah, look for that setting or the equivalent in other web browsers. Fingerprints, uh, profiling, it'll have other names. I'm just doing Firefox at this point because that's the one it seems to do it more too. It's usually referred to as Amazon or other website, takes too long to load, or keeps reloading certain things. And again, it's deliberate, but it's for bad and good reasons. And I'm willing to call it a wash. Because the rest of my computer is locked down to the point that they don't know who the fuck I am at all. And on that note, security alert. We noticed a new sign-in to your Google account on a device. Not her device or your device. Or his device. A device. I love my Fight Club reference list. 
what it should say is, security alert, we lo- noticed a sign-in to your Google account on a new device. That's what they're supposed to say. They don't say it. There's two kinds of language and titles for things. And on Google emailing system and on Google accounts, <clears throat> it does this complaint quite often. Why is that? Take the next step on your Windows device by confirming your Google account settings. Not the account. <clears throat> Check your settings. Why? If this was you, you don't need to do anything. That's a lie. You're supposed to say, yes, it was me. If it wasn't, you say, that wasn't me, and then check your settings. We'll help you secure your account. Now, they're doing this because that would cause the majority of people to do these steps each and every time. Not someone who locks down their computer so much that I have not seen an advertisement on YouTube in so long that when I saw one a couple of days ago, I'm like, is this the right website? Then I realized, oh, I forgot. I turned off all the security settings. My fault. It loaded faster, by the way. Again, for the same reason that that Amazon, if you block all the bullshit, some of the bullshit isn't bullshit. YouTube has to do the same thing, same thing with Google. This is their way of getting around it and not slowing down your computer as much. This is called the suspicious login alert. Google detects a sign-in attempt or success. That means if someone fails to get your password in there, it's immediately a a login alert. a, you know, alert. If it doesn't match normal behavior or an unusual location or device or both. Remember I mentioned that web browsers can be made to be botnets and botnets act like browsers or act like your computer or act like your location. That's the reason. Um, programs have gotten sophisticated enough that they can tunnel into your computer, steal your login and password, and do all the shit from your computer. So Google and every other website, especially emailing websites, had to get really calculated by saying he's not waiting between login and password. He's not doing things that look like a human. And then eventually they got to where it imitates a human. But the mistake that they'd make is it would try to go in through a slightly different IP address or a different version of your browser. Again, I lock my computer down to where they don't see the same browser each time, or they do see the same browser, but it's generic, looks like every other person doing what I'm doing. Now, for months and months and months, it kept, this is a suspicious login. So I'd log in once per account, do all the crap. Eventually, it got used to the fact that I'm going to do this because it asked me, please give feedback on our alerts. And then it had a selection. I have my machine locked down in a secure environment. You'll never see that. You have to log in a bunch of times to where it really does make you look like a computer geek or hacker, making sure the machine's harder to break into. That's all. And then it gave a notice. Every time your internet service provider or your administrator forces an IP address change or a hardware change or any change in the way you identify yourself through your browser, we will have to send you a login alert, but we're disabling the majority of them. I only saw that once years ago on each of the accounts. Every time I set up a new one, it's got that breaking in period. It's based on your behavior, the web browser's behavior, the timing, whether or not you do it always with a full screen window or not, etc. And or if you let them find out about it. I've disabled fingerprinting completely. Every bit of it. So it has no basis to determine anything other than a login and password, which is the way I prefer it, but... That means that my machine, if I get broken into, or someone just observes me typing in the password, could break in from everywhere. I've also disabled higher security mode for third-party apps a long time ago because it would complain every time I used an email reader instead of going to the web page. I used to run Firebird, or Thunderbird, excuse me, whatever the program is. They changed their name. It's always Bird something. Why? I don't know. But anyway, you get the idea. And yeah, that became an issue. Um... So I disabled also two-step verification. Yeah, I've completely made my my uh, Google account very easy to break into, or at least it would seem that way. Except because I did that, it got paranoid for months and months and months, which means anything a little unusual and I get a message. Now, this only happens once a month. Every time the internet service provider in this area rotates the IP address slightly. 
because I have a sub 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 IP address just like most of you and a main one I, uh, behind a net or NAT or you get the idea. So what that means is, is every time they do that, I get told it's a new device. Now, I'm going to list something here. When you're signed in from, where you're signed in is your current signed in location that they detect. Where you were before is listed as the other location. If you signed out of them, it makes them go away within 30 days or so, 28 days. But you have to tell it, yes, I'm signed out of this one, so it stops arguing. It says, okay, this is the current device. It's the only device. You have to go to that. I have a link below in the description for that. And then it leaves it there for 24, you know, for 28 days, let's say. Because that way, if somebody hijacked your account, you'll notice it within a few hours and say, hey, I want to sign back in this way, sign this one out, and then I can lock down my account. Because no matter how sophisticated they get, hackers get more sophisticated, and so do the bots. <clears throat> If you've given third-party apps on these devices access to your account, they may still have access even if you log them out. They'll just have to go through and confirm by saying, I'm a human, which is what you want. What third-party apps? Well, again, I enabled third-party apps being low security because I was using an email program. It didn't matter that I was using an email program through the IP address and hardware IDs. The email program identified itself as something other than Firefox or your cell phone. Google account sign-in prompts allow Google to offer a faster way to sign in with your Google account on supported third-party websites. This is them offering to give each website a login and password. They, they can't access your Google account, but it gives them a hash code for that session, and then the website has to not clear their cookies, and then they can access your Google account partially. You go to a website, would you like to sign in with your Google account? No. Well, to kill that, myaccount.google.com permissions. At the bottom, sign in with Google sign in. Turn that off unless you absolutely need it on. Now we'll get to the next one. Creator verification for library or library. Deliberately, phonetically, a, a double entendre. Verification has access to YouTube. View your YouTube account. Homepage, correct. Uh, date, I did it. May 29th. Yeah, that's correct. That's when I set up a channel, but that's not on the Liberty website. Well, that's their main server for that permission slip. That's actually for uh, Odyssey, a web page, or a YouTube ripoff that's actually pretty good. Now, I was wondering about that and also noticed something new. Uh, that website is actually using the same monetization Google does. You can get monetized, Google monetized. But their terms of use don't let you get demonetized for bullshit. Another plus. But it has, well, it has secure access. It might have access to information. No, it only was used to verify the account once. I can disable it at any time, but I won't because I don't need to. Third-party apps with account access, you gave these sites app access to your, your account. You can remove access if you no longer trust them, of course. Uh, library or, 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 or library. We can use this to access your credit card fingerprint stripe, phone number, or third-party access. But, but credit, that's for monetizing you. That has nothing to do with anything else. That's only if you enable monetization. Scope of identity verification. Depends on email. Is optional for going through manual approval, i.e. YouTube or GitHub re-upload. What is visible to their website? Just very little. It's only done for confirming you control a YouTube account as opposed to you somehow giving them access to your account in some other way. It's not the YouTube sync program for authenticating the YouTube account. They don't specify whether or not you can disconnect after you've done your account verification. Now, can you stop the signing notifications completely? You can go through the admin panel and it still happens, but at least the admin doesn't get annoyed. If you want to set up an admin account, uh, you're supposed to set it up only through Google Workplace and then make yourself an admin of your own one account, and then it still won't turn off the notifications. Do I hate the notifications? Yes. Do you? Probably. It's probably why you found this video. Do we need them? Yes. It just means that it 
re-identified your browser as a attack helicopter. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.